I'm Professor Jeff Charnley. I'm Associate Professor in the Department of Writing, Rhetoric, and American Cultures. And uh, the study abroad program that I developed is U.S. and World War II Europe, Memory and Memorials. We do 10 days on campus. Uh, I do a lot with war films to get students involved in the subject matter about World War II. We do two field trips in that on-campus phase that week. Uh, one of them goes, we go to the uh, Holocaust Memorial Center in Farmington Hills. And one advantage of having adult groups when you go to the Holocaust Memorial Center, they will have a Holocaust survivor who lives in the Detroit area address the group. And so that's pretty exciting and it's hard to replicate and that, that adds some substance certainly for, uh, for the students because the Holocaust is one of our main areas of study. We go to five countries in Europe and uh, we are one week in London. The first week's in the United Kingdom. Most of it is spent in London. And then the second week we go across to Normandy, to France, to the Normandy beaches. And we spend several days in Normandy and we go to all the invasion be beaches, uh, Omaha, Utah, Gold, Sword, and Juneau. All, all the beaches. Americans, of course, went in at uh, Omaha Beach and Utah Beach, but the British and the French and the Canadians and even some of the Free Dutch forces that fought with the Allies, uh, they go in at some of the other beaches. But uh, anyway, we go to all the beaches. And so we spend a lot of time in Normandy, which is, is obviously important. Students learn and have read about uh, D-Day. Uh, but it, does, it doesn't, isn't the same as being able to go there. When we finish in Normandy, we head to Paris, just like the Allies did. So there's not a lot of World War II things to do in Paris, but there are some, but uh, students usually do it on their own. And so they got the weekend pretty much free in Paris. And then the third week, we start in, uh, uh, we head toward Luxembourg in Belgium, and we stay in Luxembourg City. And then we take day trips out to, from Luxembourg to Belgium, the Ardennes region of eastern Belgium. And then from there, we literally follow the route of uh, General Patton's troops in, into Germany, up the Mosul River directly toward the Rhine River in the center part of Germany. And um, from there we go, we stay in Koblenz right on the Rhine, the students have a Rhine River cruise. And again, following General Patton's troops, we continue on in the direction of Weimar, Germany, which is in the eastern side of Germany. And um, there we have a significant study at, uh, at Weimar, at Buchenwald concentration camp. It was General Patton's troops that liberated the you know, Buchenwald concentration camp. That was very significant because a lot of the famous iconic photographs taken by Marvin Moore White and U.S. Army photographers occurred at uh, Buchenwald, both still and uh, movies that were taken. Uh, General Eisenhower and General Patton ordered the Signal Corps photographers to take to document uh, because General Eisenhower in particular was worried uh, to document what he saw because General Eisenhower wrote about this in memoirs. He said it, it was so unbelievable that without significant documentation, including photographic and movie uh, documentation of the horrors that the soldiers found at the concentration camps, that there would be, Eisenhower said, not too long before people would be denying that what happened there. He was absolutely right. So that's a very powerful day and a focus of our, uh, probably the single most important day of our study abroad is when the students and, and we go to the concentration camp. And then we finish with four days in Berlin. Uh, Berlin is about uh, three and a half hours drive on the Autobahn uh, north of Weimar. And um, the students, we see the headquarters, of course, of the Nazis and do a lot of walking tours in Berlin to see it. It's hard, hard to imagine, in a sense, because so much of Berlin was destroyed. So, you know, I, I tell students that uh, Berlin is a great city in, in spite of Hitler, not because of it. So that's basically the program in a nutshell, the four weeks and, and significant amount of time in, in each country is, is part of the idea. The students read memoirs. They read oral histories, books that are based on oral histories, and I teach students how to analyze war memorials. And then we go and look at literally hundreds of war memorials, and students, based on the criteria of analysis that I've developed 
in terms of analyzing what these war memorials tell you about the, the different countries and their approach to World War II. Late in my career now, as, as I'm just a few years out from retirement, uh, I, I'm finding that this pro has proven to be one of the more rewarding uh, experiences educationally and personally in, in my teaching career, especially at Michigan State. So I'm, I'm pleased to be and pleased to be a part of it and I'm glad I can contribute in some way. Uh, if you want more information, you can uh, uh, go on the main study abroad website and all you have to do on the search field, uh, just type in World War II and you'll find a lot of information on the 